From the previous video, we are joining the customers with their orders. The link between the two are the customer IDs. We've seen that in previous videos. Then once we have each customer linked with their order, then we say, well, group all those orders by that customer. Then we turn around and say, well, how many orders has that customer made? And then we store that information here, and then we print it. The whole reason why I even joined the customer with the order is because I want to see the contact name. If I only wanted the customer ID, I wouldn't need to join in the customer's table because O has customer ID, but who wants to be known by their ID? So we turned around and said, well, give me the contact name. Let's print the contact name. Now there's something bugging me. There's, some, there's a few things bugging me about this query. First, I have to say g.key.contact name. And I've shown you in previous videos, when you say from, you're essentially declaring a variable here. This variable, this query variable, if you would. We're introducing a variable name here, and we're introducing a variable name here. Oh, and look, we're also kind of introducing a variable name here. So why do I have to say g.key.contact name? Isn't C in the scope of this query? Couldn't I just say uh, c.contact name? I notice the red squiggly show up. I can't. I can't. If you recall when I first showed you into, into essentially takes this query out here and nests it into this query here, making G the iteration variable. So yes, C and O are visible up to this point, but then once I say into, all bets are off, this is vaporized, I got G and G is all I can work with. So I am forced to say G.key because the key is the customer, G.key.contact name. And then to get the number of orders, then I have to look at all the orders in G, which is like an I enumerable with a key. We've seen that in several videos. Tell me the number of orders there, and that will tell me my most popular customer. But there's also something else bugging me here. Sure, I can't access C or O. I, I can't say O dot in here. O doesn't work either. But but that's not the, the big problem. The big problem to me is that let's, let's say here are some orders. Okay, a little bit like that. I drew in the last video and here are some more orders just kind of scattered about we have several customers several orders All right but let's just deal with two kind of keep the easy case then i believe i had billy bob okay this is billy bob let's get maria in here uh maria i don't charge extra for the singing i promise here's maria and when we do join, we're saying, hey, join on the customer ID. So it's like I'm saying, oh, okay, Maria, here's one of your orders because you two share the same customer ID. And Maria, here's another order. Maria, here's another order. We set this link up. Right? And then same thing with Billy Bob. Link him up to all of his orders. Then after we're done linking these customers with their orders, we say, well, group the orders by their customer. Well, then we kind of already did that. I mean, we did the join, so we kind of grouped them. I mean, we didn't put them side by side as I was drawing in the previous video, but I mean, didn't we kind of already group these orders by their, because something's weird here. So Link, or the C-sharp designers specifically, came up with something cool here. You know, join could also do a group. I was doing all the work to do the join. Why don't we have the join also do the grouping? Mm. Mm, watch this. I'm going to come here. I'm going to highlight from here to here, and I'm going to hit the, the delete key. Right, delete, group by gone, all I'm left with is a join. And here's the magic secret. If you have a join, followed by an into, you would never guess this just by reading this. You have to really dig down and you have to dig down, figure it out yourself, or just watch my video. But if you have a join, followed by an into, and this is the only case this happens, is an into following a join, then the join will also group. Oh, it will group. It will it will join the customers with the orders, but it will also group the orders by their customers. Now, you'll notice I have G here, and I got this red squiggly here. What is G? G is no longer an I grouping, as I showed you in the previous video. G is all of this customer's orders. Okay, let me say that again. I have a customer. I'm joining that customer with all their orders. And when I slam an into here, it's like, well, let me maintain C, but then shove all those orders into G. So G is kind of a bad variable name now, isn't it? I don't know, this customer's orders, that might be a bad variable name too, because that's pretty far right on the screen. But let me copy that and put that here. Oops, put that, put that there. This is an I enumerable of orders. 
an enumerable of orders for this particular customer. And so hopefully that's a little bit more readable. I'm saying, well, join O into this customer's orders. Here's the group, if you would. Let num orders be this customer's orders. And then, oh, look, G, I just killed G. And you may think, well, you got to replace G with this customer's orders. But this customer's orders, it's an I enumerable. That's an I enumerable of orders. It doesn't have a key. Oh, oh. So how am I going to get the contact name? This, this is total garbage now. Well, how am I going to get the contact name? Uh, well, C. Okay, remember before with the group into, C fell out of scope. But this into with the join, it's, it's like special in its own little land. It has different semantic meaning. I maintain C. I don't maintain O. Okay, I can't say O dot here. Because why don't I maintain O? Well, there's several O's for this one customer. And all of those O's or orders are packed in this I enumerable. All right, but let's 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 control F5. This run this. Here's the results. Okay, we still see Jose 31, Roland 30, Horst Maria. All right, I like this. We got rid of the group by. We're not doing the work of the group by because join's already kind of doing the grouping. We just said, hey, join while you group. Also, uh, or while you join, do the the grouping, and we queue join into doing that by throwing the into out here. And then what's even nicer is we maintain the C variable, so I don't have to say that G dot key magic anymore. Okay, next video, I'm going to take the old version of our query with a group by, and I'm going to take this new version of our query without the group by, but instead has a join into. And we're going to do the translation. That is, as we've done in previous videos in this playlist, we're going to convert them to the extension method syntax. We can really see why this works and how it works, why it works the way it's working, and how that works, and so on and so forth.